So today is March the 10th, 2019. Uh, I haven't posted a lot lately because it's been wet and nasty. And quite simply put, I haven't been able to do a lot because I've been cleaning a ditch today. Today's the first day it's actually hit the 60s since well, last year, I guess. And uh, about a month ago, the oil cooler popped on my truck. Uh, it was just the outer O-ring. I ordered a new set of O-rings from Russell Mathis. So now I have OEM stuff to put back in. It's the actual Ford made gaskets and the International Harvester brand of O-rings. So everything should seal good. It cost about $38. And since I didn't find a video that really, I guess you'd say it was to my liking on YouTube, I figured I would just go through this step by step how I'm doing it. I'm sure there's a plenty of different ways to do it, but this is the way that I've read plenty of reviews and walkthroughs to how to do it. So I want to try to mimic and follow those as closely as possible and just try to get this done as quickly as possible. Hopefully no leaks and just get it done. Cause well, it's my work truck. So, uh, I guess let's get it started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is A, drop your oil, B, drop your coolant. Now the oil, I'm not sure if I have to do that because it, was never, it just says to do it, but it never says you have to do it. So I'm going to go with coolant first because I know that has to be done because the cooler has that. But I'm figuring since I only got about four quarts in there at the moment because it leaked out, it's all in the pan, it's been draining, so it shouldn't have any in the cooler because the cooler is actually turning that way downhill. So we'll go from there. But step one for me is gonna to be to drop the coolant. And as you can see, it is full. So I didn't wanna do this. This was actually for another purpose, but a Sterlite container is gonna be what I use to drain the coolant into so I can reuse it. I will filter it, put it back in and get it that way that get all the dirt and stuff out of it. So first thing you need to do again is just drop your coolant all right in dropping your coolant you can see where I'm at down here I'm on the driver's side there is a drain petcock here now sometimes they get clogged up from stuff sitting on the other side so what's going to happen is I want to get this started and to do that I'm just going to use some uh, uh channel locks here or adjustable pliers for you really stick name sticklers and basically just open it up a little bit at a time until it starts moving some fluid and then once it gets started i'm gonna reach around once i put my container here where i'm at to catch it and just let it drain out into the container and then that will most likely be the farthest I take the draining of the coolant today because I know there's two drain peck hooks on the back of the engine, but I'm hoping to not go that far today. So after your coolant is drained out, then you're going to need to get a 16 millimeter socket and a 14 millimeter so you can remove the power steering pump out of the way so you can get in there and rotate the oil cooler around and such. Now I've already got this bolt removed, so since I'm not removing the radiator, uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this bolt, pull it over and then behind the, the shroud and it pulls straight out so you do not have to remove the radiator for that bolt. It's about six inches long and now we're working on the 14 millimeter at the bottom and then after that is loosened I can remove the belt here and get it out of the way I haven't fully disconnected the power steering pump I just pulled it out of the way you can actually see the oil cooler now the back is the easier part to get to this is why you couldn't really see it because the power steering pump was holding it up so now I have to start removing the bolts for it All right, so in the sake of making this easier, the coolant's already been drained. I already had a new hose on, so I just removed the the lower 
cooling holes and it made these two bolts so much easier I could get to them from the bottom and rotate the ratchet up so you can see the bolt right here and one right here is already twisted out I just have to remove them and set them to the side and then we can go up top and start working on the front of the top of the front cooler head all right, so now, now that we're actually under here, stuff's out of the way, I can start showing what has to be removed. You got a bolt here, and one here on the cooler head, and then one on the top, they're 9 16 The front cooler head bolts are different from the rear, in that the front are 9 16 inch, and the ones in the rear are half inch. All right, so we're on the rear cooler head bolts. They are half inch, and on my particular application of an 88 F350 truck, there's four. A lot of information I have suggests the fans, the van's got three, and I don't know if year and application actually plays a part in it, or if they just kind of whatever floated the goat. But you got three bolts right there. And then once you go up here, you see the fourth is just kind of hanging out down in there. Uh, right there. So there's actually this this particular application of a uh, 88 F350 7.3 IDI is indeed a four bolt application like my friend Russell Mathis told me it was. So kudos to Russell, I knew what I was looking at before I got into it. Just a quick side note. Um, you'll need a way to sort your bolts out. Now, the front cooler head on this has all the same bolts. They're 9 16 inch heads with the same length of shank and stuff like that. Your rear cooler head has four different size lengths of shank. They're all half inch bolts, but they're all different lengths. So make your quick a template like this, front of engine, top of engine, and then front and rear so you know exactly where each thing goes. Just make an X, and every time that you clean a bolt, you just drop it down in there. Sometimes it helps to press just a little bit to get those started. But once they get in there, these little triangles kind of catch on the sides to keep them from just falling out. This has been the best way I've found to keep bolts straight as to where they go to and what order if there's a newer better way to do it please let me know but so far this has been the best way i've found to do bolts and it keeps them in order and like i said go through and clean them make sure there's no dirt or grime in the threads so to give you a false torque reading wire brush does great for that and i just clean the bolts up it makes it look nicer and plus you can see it a lot easier if there's going to be an oil leak where it's at stuff like that so if you have to fix it again you know where it's coming from all right all eight bolts are off now it's still draining some so there's that but the oil cooler is completely off the truck now now the fun begins of finagling it out of there one way or another if i could just get one of the heads off i could just slide it especially if i get this front head off i could slide the cooler bundle and the other head just out the back and be done don't know if that's possible but this is what we've got to work with here so again this is just as i'm going i'm kind of going by previously mentioned stuff by other people but it looks like things might have to be taken apart a little further maybe like the steering box here i've seen that mentioned that take the steering arm apart and just move it up out of the way and it allows it to come out but i don't know how that works because the brake lines come over there like two inches from the exhaust which is freaking awesome so i don't know i'm just dealing with this a little bit at a time but so far that's where i'm sitting at with this thing the, the cooler is off ready to be taken apart rebuilt put back together and then resealed back onto the truck. So I decided to go ahead and remove the steering arm out of the way. It is a 10 millimeter bolt, and it's right here. Wait. Okay. 
It is right there. The end of the socket here. It, there we go. It's blue in my case. But before I removed it, I made an alignment mark so I could put the steering back in the same place so I don't get it out of alignment so that the steering wheel doesn't sit cocked off to the side. So after that's done, you undo the bolt, remove it. This entire assembly should slide back and up out of the way, or at the very least, right there, just fold it straight up out of the way. All right, so the oil cooler, it just twisted and now it's all the way back. It's about to fall out. It's only got two points of contact holding it in. One is this brake line right here. And then on the bottom side, you can see it's caught on that uh, lip up there that for whatever reason is there. So right now we're taking this bolt that holds the little thing there, uh, the little tab, we're taking it loose so we can move the entire assembly off to the side and give us more room enough to let that slide on down. On these uh, engine mount bolts, they're a three quarter inch uh, setup. Take these two loose and then you can take the engine and lift it up on this side to get this cooler uh, set up out of here because that's all that it's holding in is just the exhaust manifold. All right, so now the cooler is out. I had to lift the engine about three inches. Oil cooler is out. This is what it looks like. This is where your filter head is here on the back. This is the end that goes towards the front of the engine. Just for a recap, the four bolts you removed earlier for the front cooler head are all the same in length and width and stuff. The four bolts you took out for the back or rear cooler head they're all the same size except for length, and if you didn't put them in order the way they came out, according to my little box setup, then you're going to have some fun trying to figure out which one goes where. So that's where we're at now. Now we got to basically pry, use a screwdriver to get in here on these tabs, like so, and gently just pry these cooler heads off. There's a tab there on that one. And there's a tab on the other one. If those get bent, don't worry, you can just tap them back in place once you're done. Right now, the point is, we're getting into this to replace the two O rings on each cooler head. After that, we'll scrape the gasket material off of here, here, and both of the sides on the engine, and then we'll put new gaskets and stuff in and start putting this back together. Now, once you start to move this cooler head, what you're going to need to do is twist it just like this to allow those alignment pins on the inside to mate up. And then you can start your prying to get it off. But basically, this is what it looks like to take it off. And if you need to hold the cooler head down, uh, the, the bundle on the inside, this is the bundle. A vise will work, a ratchet strap around uh, a work table will work, but the, the the main thing is is don't squeeze it because this is easily torn up and it's very expensive if you squeeze it too much. All right, the idea that I had for this was once we figured out it was twisting, was the old man and I each grabbed a cooler head, twisted it out of the way, and just pulled it opposite ends at the same time, and it popped out. Now this is one of your O-rings here what's left of it and then down in here is the other o-ring you're going to be looking at that's what we got to work with and that's what you need your vaseline for to make them good and slick so they don't get nicked and torn up so now at this point the bundle is out it's a good idea to well i guess you could hold it up here and see if all those cores are clear easy to deal with uh, basically here is what you're wanting to get out of there is get old gasket material like this right here that was down in there that's silicone mm -hmm. 
That's trouble with putting silicone in anything. It'll plug everything off. Like right here. Piece of rust, rock. I don't know. That almost looks like copper down in that. But yeah, that's that's basically what you want to do is at this point clean your cooler bundle out. Spray use ether or gas or whatever. Clean your filter heads out. And then we'll start with the O-rings and rebuilding it. The actual rebuild of your oil cooler after you get this cleaned here. In my personal experience of cleaning this uh, cooler bundle, I've got a Remington gun cleaning kit here. And it just so happens the rods are just the perfect thickness diameter to go through there and just barely enough, barely small enough, that it goes all the way through. And I'm going to have to use that to knock out these right here. I guess it's stones that's been tried to be sucked through, but... And they got caught, which is a good thing, but it also meant that it wasn't cooling the way it should be. So I want to finish this up and then we can start putting the new O-rings in. All right, so we're down to swapping out the O-rings and you can see why the rear head was leaking. Uh, it's this big O-ring. Was There's one, two cracked, three. It's broke. It's broke. One place. Four side is. and five. That's five cracks in that front bundle, uh, the front end of the bundle. And the rear cooler, the one that actually leaked, just simply said, I'm out of here and broke. So that makes perfect sense as to why it was leaking the way it was. But now it's not cracked anywhere else, just it broke. I don't know if it was from the extreme cold because this. This happened in, th it was like three degrees outside with a wind chill of negatives. So I'm assuming cold oil, high oil pressure, done this, plus 30-year-old gaskets don't help. So that's where we're sitting at. All right, so technically day three, second actual day of working on it because I felt like crap yesterday. Uh, today is March the 13th, it's a Wednesday, and yesterday, even though I didn't get to work on it, I went ahead and got my oil changed. This is actually uh, 12 quarts of oil. Uh, they ran a special on their CarQuest brand. So I got that, and I got a 85-74-2 CarQuest oil filter. So I'll have a fresh oil change with the cooler rebuild. And... So far, at this point, I've shown you how to take it apart as per how I did it. Now, you will need a couple things of ether, some Vaseline, a scraper kit. Uh, then, of course, you're going to need your gaskets and O-rings here, just like I've got. Now, here is where everything gets fun. Is You not only have to clean these mating surfaces right here, but you also got to go up and clear the ones off on the block so that when you put the gaskets in, nothing leaks. Alright, so now is that turn of disassembly and discovery. And now everything's cleaned as good as I can get it. we got the new seals and gaskets over here. Cleaned everything the best I could. Scraped it to where it's smooth. I don't feel any thing kind of bubbled up that would cause problems with the ceiling uh, I did use some scouring pads I highly discourage that unless you understand that they will leave the little slivers that they're made of up of in whatever you're working with so with that said you can see here where stuff has gotten caught there from where I've been cleaning so that all has to be cleaned out with air or a rag or something but the overall i cleaned it up so it does look better under hood cleaned each of the mating surfaces i still haven't got to the block yet but this side's clean too as well as that surface there now i'm assuming the little rocks and stones silica buildup i found earlier is what caused this because i don't understand what else could have 
but that's what it is. And then I took the scouring pads, and I didn't go over the fend areas in the cooler, but I did run around the seating areas of the O-rings to give them a good, clean place to seal up. So now it's time to put the O-rings back together, press the cooler heads back on, and then clean the engine block up and get it all sealed back up. All right, so this is where it's going to get fun. The O-ring kit that I got from Russell Mathis has two different colored O-rings, just like the factory ones did. The, re uh, the, the new ones are brown and green. The factory ones are black and orange. Now, the black ones actually seat up here around the outside edge of the oil cooler, and that's what keeps the oil from passing from this point outside and leaking on the ground. The orange O-ring goes down here and keeps the coolant and of the coolant on this side and the oil on this side from mixing. I got really lucky on mine, and it was the outside oil O-ring that busted, so... That's just how this is set up. It's got coolant passes through along with your oil, but they're separated by your O-rings. So, with that said, you've got two different styles of O-rings. One's really fat like this. That goes up on the main edges of the cooler. The, o, uh, the brown O-rings go down in the cooler head. Now, I've seen a lot of posts that says, hey, you can just stick them all on at the same time, shove it together and call it a day. But then I've also read a zillion more that says it's better to go ahead and put your brown ones in so that when you put your green O-ring on and you slide it down in, it won't pinch and roll on this edge right here. And you don't have to worry about your O-rings being foobarred and having to do the job all over again and or buy new O-rings. Because these are not cheap at $38 a kit. Alright, so this is what it should look like with your oil O-ring completely seated on the cooler bundle. And this is the point where a lot of people screw up, I do believe. And that is, they try to just rip and tear. And all that's really necessary for this is basically lube everything including the bundle up just a thin layer just to give it something smooth to ride on all the way down take your fingers spread it just a tad don't try to spread it one size larger but just a little bit at a time and just take your thumb and run it around like this so that it's only ever trying to get a little bit larger instead of all the way around at one time and then again, you come down here and run a thin bead of petroleum jelly or Vaseline or whatever choice you want or engine assembly lube and just gently push that down until it seats. And now you're ready for your last O-ring to go right here inside here it'll be lubricated and then from there you can go ahead and push all this together so i think i've got everything together and didn't nick anything because you felt as i was pressing these pieces together i got them as straight as i could and kind of preloaded them put them into the press which was my 20 ton bottle jack between the frame rails of Michelle apparently it's the perfect uh, press it's a little pain in hiding because it wouldn't hold together unless I had 13 elbows and hands but basically if you're doing this job these these are stiff for a reason and that's to hold the pressure because on cold startups this truck puts out about 55 psi of oil pressure and then it goes on down to 25 or so once it gets warmed up but basically I, I basically just pressed on these flat areas right there and right there now you'll f you'll find that this is a pain right here because you got to turn it out of the way so you don't press on this because this is all cast aluminum here on those cooler heads and they will crack but for instance if you got this end and this end all together and you're pressing it together 
your front doesn't it has a tab on it to pull on to get it away the the bundle away from your uh cooler head but it doesn't have a uh notch like the rear does that's how you know the front from the rear now i went ahead and wrote front on a paint pen so i'd know which end was the front now when you get this done you're going to feel it get pressure and then you'll feel it just kind of go and then it'll move about that much and then that's it now i did give it a, a pump or two just to kind of make sure but uh yeah now if it doesn't line up if you get this up on the truck and it doesn't want to line up and you find that the bolt holes aren't lining up lengthwise then that means you simply haven't pressed them together far enough i'd rather take it out and redo it in terms of press it a little more than to press it one big time clip the o-rings and ruin the engine and have to do this all over again but your rear cooler head has this little notch and that's what fits up into it is this uh, tab and don't worry if you bend these all you have to do is just press them back out with a hammer tap them out whatever you'll be good to go now at first glance you'd say that this tab is that this isn't far enough but when you look at it it's actually bent so it's perfect so at this point i've got this clean i've got the engine block cleaned now it's time to go and pop out the gasket kit and this is the part number for it and this is the gasket kit that i used it came from russell it's oem ford it's not motorcraft that's made for ford it's legitimate ford parts as was the o-rings that i showed you earlier were legitimate international harvester made stuff not aftermarket and made for it now these do have the silicone on them like you saw in the water pump video if you watched that uh i asked russell if i should use rtv on this and he said absolutely not at first i was like ah why not and then it hit me the coolant bundle uh here and the passages and stuff you don't want to get your silicone and rtv up in your cooler head and block it off so he says dry fit or if you must to get help it stick a trick i learned a long time ago was to take some vaseline get you just a bit on your hands smear it on and then stick it on it kind of does the job of rtv in terms of especially valve covers where they're long and skinny and they tend to bow in the center towards each other or water pump gaskets where they got to be on a 90 degree angle or somewhere funky uh, a little bit of vaseline it won't hurt anything it won't degrade anything but it'll help it tack up and stick there until you get the bolts in and get it bolted in so that's the option there but he said absolutely no rtv for the basic pr purpose that it could possibly get into your coolant jackets like we found earlier in this somebody put a sealant on the water pump because i found that when i tore it apart and it had traveled to the coolant bundle here so here we go with that so at this point everything's ready and it's literally just the reverse of what we did to get it out is to put it back in and go from there all right so here we are this is thursday the 14th of march i finally got this back together uh 99 percent of this was a one-man job i only needed an extra set of hands for two little tiny spots which was just to kind of give it a little bit of weight in the front so i wasn't trying to support it all the way back here when i put it back in now given i have been sick i went to the doctor last night apparently i've got a sinus infection so probably sound even more terrible than normal given that i've got everything hand tied only so that when i use my handy dandy torque wrench here i can go 24 pound feet of torque in the front for the first four bolts in an x pattern of course and then in the back four bolts you want to tighten them to 14 pound feet of torque and then your cooler should be good to go for 30 more years again this is the video that i didn't find on youtube was how to actually 
take it apart, what bolts to take apart, how much to torque them back to, blah, blah, blah. Basically, that's what this channel is about, is I try to give the most information possible in the least amount of time, and some of my videos are lengthy, but they they just take that long. There's a lot of information there, there's a lot of protocol and procedure. So, at this point, the oil cooler is on and is about to be torqued down, so it's done. I want to drop the oil, put the drain plug back in, do an oil change with a fresh filter, and then I want to put the lower radiator hose back on. I'm going to fill the coolant back up. I'm going to strain it first. I'm actually just going to strain it through a uh, coffee filter or two just to get the worst of it out because I don't have $75 or so for new coolant right now, but I will be changing that soon again just a precautionary thing uh, I still have the negative battery cable that I had to take off to put back on and of course put the power steering pump back on uh, that's the next thing I wish I had had extra money I would have combined two videos and just showed you how to replace the uh, power steering pump while I had it off but it is what it is and here we are so once that is back up and the fresh filter and fluids is back on we should be able to start this thing up and do a test start get it started and immediately check for any leaks because that's where it's going to leak from is one of these two cooler heads after that if there's no leaks there and i can confirm there's no coolant in my oil or oil in my coolant which is just take the dipstick off test the oil and take the cap off and make sure there's nothing there if that all verifies out then we're golden. We don't have to take this thing back apart again. Hoping and praying I don't have to do this. I'm sick and I don't feel like dealing with it anymore. But that's it. That is how to rebuild the oil cooler. Uh, as best as I can do it with one hand. Because one hand is usually working in the video. As well as holding. I don't have a tripod yet. Which would be a, a godsend right now if I could get one. But uh, again this is just... If nothing else, it's just a visual idea of what, what all goes into this. Everything is done as best as I can do. I uh, made sure all the, bol the bolts for the cooler heads were tight. I reattached my ground wire right here, tightened it here. I did not reattach the power steering pump yet, but I did, however, take the fan belt off reason for that if there's an issue I didn't want to have to fool with taking this off too so I'm going to test start it then if everything works power steering pump and steering shaft right here are all going to go back to where they're supposed to be but for the time being and testing we're not going to deal with that so that being said we've confirmed this terminal is tight from there to the engine block did the wiggle test over here nothing's moving Follow on over to the positive side, just making sure nothing moves and goes from there. So everything seems tight. Oil change is done, filter is tight. Uh, I haven't got the last two quarts of fluid in for the oil yet, but that again, if it mixes, that's two quarts I don't have to buy. So just for a, a quick start up for about five minutes, two quarts low ain't gonna hurt. Uh, I went through, put the coolant back in so it's completely full. So we can go ahead and put the cap on it. And at this point, as far as I'm concerned, everything should be ready to start up. I had to ether the old girl to get her going, but that's a whole different issue. That's a leaky bit of fuel. I know exactly where that issue is. But she's running. So far I don't see any oil gushing out anywhere. I'm hoping to let it idle for about five to ten minutes to allow the thermostat to open up and go from there. And once everything's good, I'm gonna check the oil again, check the uh, coolant, make sure those two aren't mixing. The oil isn't getting into the coolant, the coolant into the oil. And if there's no overall leaks under there, then I can consider this project done. 